This is Twit. Uh, there is a little bit of a, there was a story, it's kind of an interesting story, I don't know what to think about it, uh, about the uh, AI security being used in Olympics. You watch the Olympics? Did you watch the opening? I, no, I'll be honest, I didn't. Oh, you got to watch them. They're crazy. Crazy. Bloomberg Law. Olympics AI security stokes backlash over mass surveillance. But if you're going to use AI security anywhere, that seems like a good place where you have millions of people all over the city. Mm -hmm. You you don't know you know what's going on where it's one of it, the they uh, it's the most according to Bloomberg public and controversial rollouts ever of algorithmic video surveillance. Hmm. It's a public place though, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's illegal. Uh, video cameras around the city watch millions of visitors to detect weapons or people moving against the crowds. That's always a sign when mm -hmm. somebody's going the wrong way. Among other things, it could be seen as precursors to an attack. Security personnel will then decide whether to notify authorities, including local and national police. The French lawmakers call the tool a security measure, <laughs> of course, aimed at shielding the multi-week event from violence, Privacy advocates have sounded alarms. I think it makes sense. Yeah, sometimes I feel like privacy advocates want a perfect world. Yeah, yeah. And in a perfect world, you're right. You could uh, you could go about your business and no one would know. But when you're in public, mm -hmm. especially uh, of such a vulnerable event as the Olympics, I don't feel like there's anything wrong with that. Of course, what they're going to say is, well, but the problem with AI surveillance is false positives. Uh, that it might identify somebody who's just walking home, which is against the direction of the crowd. But then it, this is the thing. They hand that over to That's humans. when the humans get involved. And the humans decide that. Uh, as long as, here's, I think as always with AI, the, the problem is always the humans. As long as the humans know that the AI is just, you know, an AI and isn't, you know, don't arrest that guy immediately because the AI said so. Right. Use your human judgment. Then I don't think you have so much of a problem. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so that's um, that's going to be in the news. I imagine <laughs> I'm uh, of all of all places you could use this. The two I would say you have to are Taylor Swift concert and mm. the Olympics. Yeah, stadiums. I I think it I think it makes sense as just an extra filtering tool. And then, as you've said, you have to build on top of that. We have seen issues where humans aren't receiving enough training and thereby aren't given enough understanding of what AI is actually doing in these situations, which is where that overreach can sometimes happen. An example of this that's on a far less uh, dire scale is that a number of freelance writers were fired because they were writing their pieces and submitting them to these big uh, kind of freelance companies that hire writers for different things. And they were scanned at the company to see if they were written by AI. And the tool was saying 87% human, 23% AI. And what the, the people who were doing the scanning thought that meant is that 87% of the piece was written by humans and 23% of the piece was written by AI, when in fact what it was saying is that it's 87% confident that it was written by a human with 23% confidence that it was written by AI. And that small misunderstanding led to a lot of people, several people being fired without any consideration or, or sort of uh, follow up with those people because it was a misunderstanding of the tool. So I do think that it is important that if these tools are being used, that they're being properly trained on what the AI is indicating when it's indicating something. And, you know, we don't have that behind the scenes look at exactly how this is being used, unfortunately. <laughs> Rusty Bone says, I wish I could go through one day without hearing that name, Taylor Swift. <laughs> okay, 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 just calm down. It's going to be okay. <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll be fine. It's going to be okay. I don't... Did, <laughs> did, did, did Taylor Swift hurt you? <laughs> I think so. I think, um, I think he's there got was, a, he maybe was an old boyfriend. I don't know. <laughs> there was another one. That's probably what it is. Yeah, the last sure album was it. written about Rusty Bones. Um, that song, Iron Oxide. Hey, if you like what you just saw, all you got to do is head to twit.tv slash ATG to subscribe. Then smash the bell, hit the button, and I don't know, do that stuff the YouTubers do.